Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be talking about Act 5, Scenes 1 and 2, and then working on the foreshadowing assignment. Um, so, here we go. Um, if you are looking at Act 5, Scene 1 with me, um, it starts off with Romeo, and if you remember, he is banished in Mantua. So he is in Mantua, and he has this dream. And in this dream, he has this dream that uh, Juliet finds him and he's dead and uh, she brought him back to life with a kiss. So this is foreshadowing because that foreshadows his death and the fact that he's going to die first. Um, but it also kind of foreshadows at the end, I rose up, I was an emperor and like this makes me so happy, it's going to be a good day. So that foreshadows that he would get some good news if he stayed in Mantua long enough to get the letter. But he doesn't, and here's why. He doesn't get the letter because Balthazar shows up right after um, Romeo has his dream. He sees Balthazar, which is his friend and his servant, um, and Balthazar brings him the news that Juliet is buried in her family's tomb, so that she's dead. Um, so, Romeo never gets the letter, guys. Never. He gets just Balthazar's news that Juliet is dead. Um, so, he has this really famous line right here where he says, Is it and so? So, is it really true? Then I defy you stars. So, he's not saying, I'm rebelling against you stars. He's saying, I'm defying fate. I'm defying the universe. I am going to take matters into my own hands. Um... So then he goes, he turns to kind of Balthazar and he tells him, get me some ink, some paper, and get me some horses. I'm going to Verona tonight. So Balthazar is his friend and he's like, please have patience, calm down, you look like you're going to hurt yourself. But Romeo's like, no, you can't, you can't tell me, you, you need to go and do what I asked you to do. So Balthazar goes to do it um, and Romeo decides that... Um, he is going to lie with Juliet tonight, meaning he's going to go to Juliet's tomb and kill himself. So he is trying to decide how to do it. And he says, destructive thoughts come quickly to the minds of desperate men. So he immediately thinks of, well, I remembered this apothecary who is like a pharmacist that lives nearby. So normally this apothecary would have all kinds of like weird you know, uh, cures that they used back then, uh, for example, like leeches and things like that. Um, so he goes and he finds this apothecary and he remembers that this apothecary is very poor. There are a few empty boxes on his shelves. There were musty seeds. Um, noticing all this poverty, I said to myself, if a man needed some poison, um, which they would immediately kill you for selling, here is somebody desperate enough to sell it. So he uses this apothecary's poverty against him. Um, so he shows up and he finds this very poor apothecary, this very poor pharmacist, basically. And he is like, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to give you, uh, or I want to buy some poison. And the apothecary says, that's illegal. I have it, but I can't sell it to you. And Romeo's like, well, the law isn't your friend, and you're too poor to say no. And so he gives him a very large amount of money, and the apothecary is too poor to not. He's starving, guys. Um, so the apothecary again says, put this in any liquid, drink it down. I don't want to give it to you, but I'm going to. So Romeo gets the poison, and he gets the horses, and he rides off to Juliet's grave that's where I must use it so he rides off with the plan that he is going to go kill himself in Juliet's tomb which brings us to act five scene two so act five scene two is when Friar Lawrence realizes that his plan is falling apart so Friar Lawrence remember sent Friar John with this letter for Romeo. And he says, okay, Friar John, bring it to Romeo. Well, just like your lovely teacher, Friar John gets quarantined because of a, um, it's a plague outbreak instead of COVID, but still, 
um, he is quarantined. So, Friar John, I went to find another poor friar. Um, he was visiting the sick. They'd been suspected that the house had been hit with a plague. So they quarantined, they sealed the doors, and they refused to let us out. So Friar Lawrence is like, okay, well then who took my letter to Romeo? And Friar John hands him back the letter, guys. He couldn't deliver the letter. So Romeo never gets the letter. Friar Lawrence starts to realize that everything is falling apart. And he's like, oh my goodness, this was so important. Like, you should have brought this to him or told me sooner. And so he rushes off to go get Juliet because he thinks Romeo is still in Mantua. So he's going to write to Mantua again, and then he's going to keep Juliet in his church or in his cell until Romeo comes because he can't leave her in the tomb because nobody wants to be in there with somebody's rotting corpse. But he also doesn't know that Romeo's coming, so he's got to go get her out of the tomb alone. Um, so this leaves the plan kind of already falling apart again. So if you remember, it was already rushed because Capulet, Juliet's father, moved the wedding up a day. Then, now we find out that Friar John couldn't deliver the letter and that Juliet's about to wake up and there may be nobody there. We also find out that Romeo, not only did he not get the letter, but his servant, Balthazar, was spying and saw Juliet dead, or at least what they think is dead. Um, and so Romeo rides off to save her, um, or at least rides off to um, go see her and kill himself. Uh, not really save her because he doesn't know she's alive. Um, so that being said, that is Act 5, Scenes 1 and 2. You'll read Scene 3 tomorrow. Um, what we are going to be doing next is working on this foreshadowing assignment. So give me just a second to get that opened up with Cammie and we'll talk about it.